Praise God for his word and love. The gateway to success. Thank you, Father. The secret to success. We praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for opening our hearts and minds to this. Thank you for stirring me again, stirring my spirit and stirring my mind to come back on this subject as a full-time subject. Praise you for it in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking you, sir, not one person, and the sound of my voice here online or later listening to CDs, watching DVDs, in whatever way this message goes forth, not one person in the sound of my voice will be untouched by the power of the living God. We pray it in the name of Jesus and consider it done because we have faith in that name. Praise you, Father. Amen. Glory to God. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> We've talked about the fact that faith works by love and faith does work, but it only works when it's put to work. <coughs> I've seen this, I, I, I've seen it in my own life. I, I, I'm gonna come down there. This wind up here is pretty strong. Thank you. Hmm. Weather's a little better down here. <laughs> and the company's a little closer. <clears throat> I was preaching. I don't even remember now where it was. And of course, I was down here close, you know. And I, I stepped on somebody's toes. <laughs> and they said, You're stepping on my toes. <laughs> And I, and, I, and I don't remember just exactly what I said, but I thought, uh, with my feet or with what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, <clears throat> if your toes, your toes are out there, I probably get stepped on. <laughs> Brother Hagen, oh, bless his heart, I miss him too. Yeah. <clears throat> Someone said, Brother Hagen, you've got me all confused. He said, no, ma'am, you were confused before I got here. <laughs> he said, nobody ever walked up in the attic and said, look at all the dust this light has caused. <laughs> no, 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 you was confused for it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now, where was I, Lord? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here's another thing that most Christians have, and I, I didn't for a long time <clears throat> until I, would, I became so vitally interested in receiving communion, what it means. And it, it says, as often as you do this. So I do it a lot, particularly when I'm home in my study. And uh, I have several translations on my desk and, and you know, I mean, you can do it on your iPad and all that, but I like paper. <laughs> Open your iPad, you know. This 
the battery never has run down in this. I never had to plug it in in the nighttime. It stays plugged in <laughs> as long as I'm plugged into it. And uh, <laughs> I was David Barton, bless his heart. You know, David, David's funny. He's a fire hilarious. He's real dry witted. He can say something and not, not smile. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> and we were in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. And uh, I had it laid out there beside him, beside me. And he said, Brother Copeland, where do you get a white highlighter? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I only highlight the good stuff. <laughs> and then I learned how to do it on my iPad and my iPhone. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> okay. Now, go back, go to, go to the Gospel of John. When you study getting over into the latter part of what the Apostle of Love wrote, He's the one they couldn't kill. They tried, boiled him in oil and it didn't work. So they threw him away on the Isle of Patmos. So he got out there and just finished it up. Went back home. This writing beginning with the 12th chapter and you move over in the 12th chapter into the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when the Jews knew that his hour was come, Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world. Now we're moving over into what is called the last Supper. The most important covenant meal in the history of heaven and earth. It was not at a great large table. That's just an artist rendering of it. It was in the middle of the night, very intimate. It was dark. They sang psalms together. And he got Judas out of the room. Mm -hmm. What you have to do, go do it now. Get out of here. Then he began to talk to them. Precious things. Precious things. Precious to him, precious to us. Thank you, Lord. Let's back up here. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Let's go, let's go to the, let, let's, let's, let's go to the 21st first. When Jesus, no, 22nd. Verily, verily, it's two verilies. That verily means it is more of a legal term. It, it stands in that same place like uh, I'm telling you the truth, nothing but the truth. Verily, verily. Now listen, of a truth I tell you. And verily, verily. This is important. <clears throat> Verily, 
the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I speak not, a, not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe. Now notice he is in italics that you may believe that I am. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomever I send receives me. He that receiveth me receives him that sent me. This is very intimate. This is, it's very dim, lamp lit, very intimate conversation. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Well, he loved them all. But this was John's confession. He was the only one of them that stayed with him all the way through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He didn't run. Mm. <clears throat> now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom. Now get an image of that. He wasn't sitting next to him at a table. That's just an artist rendition, rendition written back in a time when there was very little scripture handy to even get it from. And particularly not the kind of revelation we have today, thousands of years later or hundreds or however long it's been. Leaning on his bosom. He was right there on his right. that, you know, study these things. And when you receive communion, see yourself right there next to John. And you're just right there in your own mind. You're, you're right there because we have what we, we have in the, in the gospels, everything he said that night. Leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Now, Simon Peter therefore beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spoke. John, Peter, James, and John. But John had this way in faith about him. He was close. He just hung on everything Jesus said. He was younger. And Peter came up there. I can just see Peter. Ask him. <laughs> ask him who it is. Yeah. You ask him. No, 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 no. You do it. <laughs> I want to be one that's that close. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be one that's. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to be right there. Yeah. And we are. Yes. Because he, those men were close, but they were not family. We're kin folks. And Jesus said, the prophet has no honor at home. And some of my kin folks one time <laughs> said, 
Uh, no, didn't ask me. You think Kenneth's a prophet? Well, he's our kin folks. Uh, elder, every prophet was somebody's kin folks, <laughs> including Jesus. That's Amen. Amen. <laughs> but we're family. Yeah. Yeah. We've been born into the family. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're blood kin yes, yes. in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Didn't take me long to eat a happy tonight. <laughs> Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. That is a covenant matter. You, you, you can see it in the book of Revelation. Jesus knocking on the heart door of the church's heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you will open the door to me, this, this is not talking about the heart of a sinner. It was the heart of the church. Mm -hmm. If you will open the door to me, I will come in and I will, huh? You know what that stands for in covenant? When I come in here, I'll take care of all the bills. You let me sit down and eat with you and I'll pay for the groceries. <laughs> I'll pay the rent on this house. And if you let me stay here long enough, I'll buy you a new house. <laughs> that, that's, co that's covenant speech. This is an Eastern book. Western minded people have a hard time with this because of our religious things and just don't pay enough attention. Oh, so Jesus gave Judas an opportunity. His name was actually Judah. He gave him an opportunity right then, but he didn't take it. I'm totally convinced he paid so little attention. He had money on his mind and everything, but so many times right there in Nazareth, he was there when Jesus hid himself and walked out from among them and they had no idea where he went. They were going to shove him off that cliff. They didn't know what happened to him. That's not the only time he did that. Now that, this is just me, you understand? But I've been reading this book a long time. Yes. I'm convinced that he thought for sure he would just, you know, he would just come up and kiss him. Because they all thought this thing was, you know, I mean, he's just going to restore Israel and they're going to kick Rome out of here and that's going to be the end of this thing. That he would just suddenly disappear. It didn't work that way. Now follow me carefully. After the sop, after that, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus to him, that you do do it quickly. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke this unto him. Some of them thought Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, buy some things that we have need of against the feast or that he should give something to the poor. I mentioned this before. You have to have a giving reputation that is beyond anything you can imagine to think in the middle of the night, right in the middle of a Seder meal that Jesus would lean over and say, go give some so-and-so. <laughs> but it wasn't strange to them. That's right. The man at the beautiful gate. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
how many times you can count them. And it must not have been all of them. Mm -hmm. Just count them in the book of Mark. Yeah. How many times they went back and forth in that temple. Mm -hmm. And people have majored up on the cleansing of the temple and didn't realize he went, didn't go in there just to clean it. He went in there to preach. That's right. Yes. That's right. Mm. And walked right past that same man. Now, you want to go widescreen with this? <laughs> That's the reason when he saw Peter and John, he thought, here I'm come my boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Expecting to receive something from them. Why? Because Jesus, when he was there, I mean, he got something every time Jesus walked through that gate, every time Jesus said, come on, come on, come on, make his way for him today. Every time Jesus walked through that gate. You going to tell me he walked past that beggar, didn't give him anything and him at the gate of the temple. So he is absolutely a legal beggar. Amen. He wasn't blind, but he was legal. Bartimaeus was blind, but he was legal. And if you were, if the, if the priests declared that you were blind, you wore a garment that declared you were not a phony. And he heard Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. The Jewish word is chesed. It is a hard word to translate in English. It is a covenant word. When David blood covenant with Jonathan and he said, is there none left of the house of David to whom it says that I might show kindness to whom I might do hesed yes. where the bigger blesses the less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mercy is translated chesed, hesed. It's actually chesed. Mm -hmm. oh. Jesus, son of David, Messiah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. Messiah. Yes. He knew who he was. Right. Uh -huh. Do chesed on me. Mm. Yes. Jesus stopped. Mm. Somebody knows who I am. And he's calling for covenant hesed. And Jesus said, <laughs> bring him here. And of course they'll say, oh, he wants you now. <laughs> well, what does it matter? They didn't know who he was. His own staff didn't know who he was. <laughs> what did Bartimaeus do? I no longer call him blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus threw off his robe, right. his garment. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus just simply said, Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? Mm. Right. Thank you Jesus knew what he wanted, mm -hmm. but he had to say it. That's yeah. good. That's right. yes. He had to release his faith yeah. with his mouth. He was an act of faith when he dropped that garment, but he had to say it. He had to say it. That I received my son. Jesus said, okay. <laughs> Anyone? He's the same way today. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now, that's very telling. He's gone. He's out here now. Now I can talk to you. Now is the Son of God glorified and God is glorified in him. 
If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you, you shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. And now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. See that, that um, mark there is a colon. Now remember, in the Greek text, particularly where this Bible was translated, there's no capital letters. There's no punctuation marks. And certain things were added and, and so forth. So it literally reads, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Commandment. My brother and sister, this is, this is not a suggestion. Mm -hmm. right. This is commandment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, is there an attorney here present? Mm. Anyone an attorney? I wonder how many laws we have, how many federal laws we have on the books in the United States now. Mm. Anybody have any idea? I don't. I don't care how many tens of thousands they are, there are, to enforce 10. Ten Commandments. That's what God gave Moses. And then they got in and decided that ain't enough, we're going to fix it. <laughs> So then they came up with about 600 more uh -huh. and a little jerky ideas of what this one meant and what that one meant. You're going to go this far and that far and Jesus broke them all, <laughs> except the 10. <laughs> Amen. The leper broke the law and fell at Jesus' feet. Jesus broke the law when he touched him. And they want us to stay home from church to keep from sneezing with a virus that can only go six feet. Yes, sir. That's right. The jab. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, people, you know, people are trying. To, and anyway, I'm, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. Well, yeah, I was. I think. <laughs> Now come down to the 14th chapter. Let not your heart, you, don't you let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, now listen, he wasn't standing up preaching, he's just talking. He did things that night they didn't understand. Didn't understand. Mm -hmm. The bread was not a big loaf of bread. It was matzah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I use it still. Yes. I buy it where you, where you buy Jewish supplies. Mm -hmm. No salt. No salt. a big loaf. It doesn't hurt if you use a big loaf, but that's not what was there. And there were three pieces. And the napkin was folded. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Then you take 
Isaac out and you break him. He did all that. And the Messiah's cup was always upside down. And that night he did all that. He took it out and he took out that middle one and he said, this is my body broken for you. Then he did the unthinkable. He turned the cup right side up and poured in the wine. And they drank with him. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. They still, what? A new commandment, a new covenant, what? Precious, the most precious moments on earth. <clears throat> and only hours away would be the most precious moments in heaven. And I'll stop there just a moment. Now we know right here in, the, in, in, in John's gospel, 20th chapter, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's when they got born again. What are the requirements? The apostle Paul tells us how to get saved. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Well, they believe that. I mean, they saw it and confess him with your mouth as Lord. Well, they had done that. He just breathed on them and the new birth took place. I thought it took place at Pentecost. No, no, no. That's when the Holy Spirit came back into this atmosphere. And that sound, it was not a rushing mighty wind. It was the sound of a rushing mighty wind. That rushing mighty wind sound was not just the Holy Spirit, but the untold number of angels that came back into this atmosphere. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation? Innumerable number of angels, trillions of them. In this atmosphere, uh, personally, I believe you could have heard it anywhere on the planet. This atmosphere was charged with Satan's defeat. <laughs> He's done. You can stick a fork in him. Send his saddle home. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet you've not known me, Philip? 
he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then show us the Father? You believe Now, not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father on me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. I'm doing the works of Jesus right now. Now, what did Jesus say? I mean, the crowds were just overwhelming. And his family thought, he's absolutely crazy. He doesn't do anything like he's supposed to. He doesn't qualify to be a prophet. He doesn't come from the tribe of Levi. We're of the tribe of Judah. Who is he? He's crazy. His family thought he was. The scripture says lunatic. That means moonstruck. He doesn't do what a prophet's supposed to do, yet he acts like one. And they said, would you send him out here? We'd like to talk to him, please. He wouldn't answer. And he, to the people he was talking to, he said, who are those that do the will of my father? Those that do the will of my father are the ones that listen to me. So we're doing the works of Jesus. We're in the will of God. Amen. And all that very large household (laughs) <laughs> that's watching. Wish we had room for you in here. We do. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You only mentioned that now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Lord, well, you know, I, I do what he says. Um, just any moment now, my granddaughter, Jenny, lives. She founded an orphanage in Thessaloniki. And her little son, Andrew, is due any minute. Glory and I are going to have a little Thessalonian (laughs) great grandchild. (laughs) (laughs) Right there. When I married them, I had to practice his name. Anyway, (laughs) I married them. And so I I just walked back around there just a few moments after the wedding. And he's a tall young man, handsome, good looking young man. And, um, and so I just slipped a few hundred dollar bills over, you know, for a little, little, little honeymoon thing here, you know, and and, and in her hand, she said, Oh, (laughs) Popo. And she turned around to him. I mean, he's tall, handsome young man. She said, uh, now, would you like, like to pray for Popo? And he said, well, yes, but may, may I pray, pray in Greek? Uh-huh. Greek? Mm-hmm. I said, he gonna pray for me in the mother tongue. Mother tongue. <laughs> 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 so I little Thessalonian go, <laughs> gonna be born here any minute, well, anytime between now and the 10th of this month. <laughs> when I first when she brought uh, some of his two sisters home uh, that the, were in uh, Elias's family. And uh, <laughs> so Jenny introduced them to me as first and second Thessalonians. <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> anyway, let's go down here. I, I bordered this in my Bible in red, the 21st verse. The 20th verse, at that day, you shall know that I'm in the Father and you in me and I in you. What day? Just a few days from now. So when did they know it? 50 days. Pentecost. That's when they found it out. That's when he came in them. He foretold it right there. Well, you see it there. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter that he might abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you in just a few days. At that point, they had no concept of what he was saying because they had a few hours of really tough going here. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Mm. Oh, I will manifest myself to him. Wow, Jesus, you know how much I love you. You don't ever manifest yourself to me. Oh, you really love, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> then why don't you do what I tell you to do? Uh, well, we'll talk. <laughs> now, I've been guilty of this. I don't get on you for anything I hadn't already, my toes have already been stepped on. I've said this a lot of times, but the Lord gets on me, then I come get on you. <laughs> he woke me up. Then it's my responsibility to share with you what happened to me and how, thank God, he fixed it. And the things that cost me dearly disobedience just because I thought I had a better idea. And I answered for myself why bad things happen to good people. It is so simple because good people make bad choices. And there's a lot of things that I would go back and change. Just for instance, I was too heavy. At one time, I weighed a hundred pounds more than I do now. Now that's ridiculous. But of course that is Kenneth BC, thank God. Oh Lord. Chap, now I had, <laughs> uh, I really had chopped some of that down. That happened to me right after I got out of high school. But I, I started getting that off. Yes. Then I got my draft notice and mama fed me real good. <laughs> Cause her baby, uh -huh. I'm an only child. I'm the dumbest child they ever had, <laughs> but I'm the smartest one. <laughs> Somewhere there in the middle. And, and oh, child. Now, when I, 
Uh, it was the last basic training outfit ever at Fort Bliss, Texas in, in El Paso. They turned it into a Nike missile base. We drew our clothing in the old cavalry barn. <laughs> and it was really mixed up and messed up because they were trying to close it down and they kept it open for one more bunch, you know. And so orientation was three times as long as it should have been. <laughs> anyway, and I, it wasn't a diesel train. It was a choo-choo, a tutu <laughs> twain. And it chugged its lousy, sorry way <laughs> almost all night long <laughs> from Fort Worth to El Paso. <laughs> oh, anyway, finally got out there day one. <clears throat> well, I'd been in the reserve, so I, I, I knew the procedures, you know. Okay. <laughs> and I'd been, that, that first day, you know, I was dressed right, dressed. But I, I mean, I snapped to, and here come Top. Oh, chap. Top soldier. Yes, sir. Sergeant Major. Six stripes and a diamond. <clears throat> what is that, an E8? Yes. No, oh, I'm an E nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm U.S. property. I got drafted. <laughs> I'm a slick sleeve, <clears throat> but I'm, <clears throat> I'm standing there like this. <laughs> this man, I mean, he was so sharp. I mean, his khakis were, I mean, creased. He's just I guarantee somebody starched and ironed them that morning. Thank you. My name starts with a C. So I get stuck right up front all the time. <laughs> and he walked by and he's turned around there and he looked right straight at me. I would say he's six four, probably weighed 220, waist about that big around, and one of the blackest men I have ever seen in all my life. I thought, well, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. And he poked me in the bed. I, it wasn't easy either. Boom. <laughs> He said, <laughs> we're going to let the wind out of you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh. And they did, man. <sighs> they hurt me. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, not then I didn't, but I do now. <laughs> and then bivouacked in the white sands desert in New Mexico. Anyway, quite an experience. <laughs> then later, the Lord just simply said to me, start walking and don't quit. Well, when I went to Oral Roberts University, the Lord said to me very plainly, now you're gonna have to get that weight off of me. Gloria and I got married the uh, 13th, Friday the 13th of April, 1962. And I weighed, I weighed about 225 then. And um, I was a little taller than I am now, and, I, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you how, how all this occurred. So <clears throat> I did, I started walking a while and, and it, you know, I was, and, but, but the Lord said, when I went to ORU, he said, you get that fat off of me. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't know anything, Chad. From the day we left, I ate nine boiled eggs that day. That's all I knew to do. And just started taking it off. Well, <laughs> but I did not do what he said to. I kept it down, but I did not start walking. 
I kept my weight down. Sunday, after Southwest, unusually hard meeting, a number of things that, that happen unusual. But anyway, a Sunday after the meeting, I came home Sunday. We came home Saturday night. Of course, it was there at Fort Worth. Sunday, I got up. All I wanted was a hot shower and just anything this side of boiling was all right. Ah, ah. <laughs> just let the water run. My shower, you walk into it this way. Shower head is this way. There's a little bench across here. And my, I took my washcloth and I just threw it over there, intending to hit the bench with it. But I didn't, I threw it in the corner of the, and so I didn't pay attention to that. And I just got over there and just sat in there, just let that hot water run on me. Had I done this, I didn't. I did this. Oh. There was a disc exploded in my back. It didn't just burst, it exploded. I fell on the floor, couldn't move. Uh, I, I've never known pain like that. Not ever in my life. I couldn't get out of the floor. Now the young man, David Weeder, David Weeder is a chiropractor. And back there then, they, he and Lynn, both chiropractors, and they, they had their practice then. But, well, um, oh, I screamed as loud as I could. Uh, and, and the glory just got on the telephone, called them, and in a few moments they were there. And they just began to work on me. Right then I made the decision. Now listen to me. I am not against surgery. I'm not against that. But I made my decision right then. I'm not going that way. I knew in my heart, my disobedience, I knew it at the time when I knew it, I, I knew it, I knew it. Had I just done what the Lord told me to do, I would have strengthened these core muscles and, and that wouldn't happen. But it's too late. My disobedience cost me. I mean, he and Lynn started working on me. I called Dr. Colbert and, and I mean, between he and David, I mean, they started working on me and I'm pain free. I am pain free. It took a while. And the first thing I had to do was repent with all my heart and begin to praise him as loud as I could. And I filled my mouth with praise and worship. And I got out in the backyard and I, I took two heating pads and took the sash off of two old, old robes and tied both of those heating pads on that left leg and turned them up just as high as I could get them, trying to get one pain to outlast and out, mark out the other one. And, but, but the thing that happened, I get out there in the backyard and just start, I thank God, thank God for the birds. Thank God for the trees. Thank God for my other leg. It doesn't hurt. Hallelujah. My hands don't hurt. My eyes don't hurt. My hand, my fingers, my back, well, well forget that. But I, Amen. Amen. and as loud as I'd praise it, as soon as when I started, I hear it, but come back to pain. And the word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord said, don't you remember in my word when I said, why take ye the thought saying? 
He said, Kenneth, is pain in the thought life? Well, yes, it is. I mean, what do they do when they operate on you? They put you to sleep because pain is in the brain. So I began to say it. And David would be working on me. I don't take the pain crying. I don't take the pain crying. Glory to God. You bore my pains. They're not mine. They're not mine. You bore mine. I've had people come, would you pray for my arthritis? No, I'll pray for you. You've owned it. No, Jesus bore my sicknesses. He carried my pains. He bore my sins in his own body on the tree that I being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes I was healed. If I was, I am. I don't own that. Now <clears throat> you can understand then why it is so powerfully important to never say, I'm afraid I'm taking the flu. I don't care what kind it is. You could hold a gun on me, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Amen. Now, people don't understand this. I do all those things in the natural that I've learned over the years, starting with my mother and others, to keep my immune system high. Now, when I did obey God and I did get in the exercise room, I heard Brother Hagin say this, yeah, you say something long enough for it to get down in your heart, it'll control your life. Okay. Yeah. And I have, we have a, a, a nice exercise room <clears throat> and there's a, a, an A-frame and you know, there's a bar across here and, and two like this, weights on each end of it and that kind of thing. And I, well, I mean, I'm all suited up, man. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got my, all my stuff on. I'm suited out. I'm, I'm going for this thing. I caught that little rope and I'm fixing to do, do this. And I went, God, I hate this. <laughs> oh, no. oh. And I said, no. Mm. I physically felt, I physically felt that devil leave my body. He wasn't in it. Yeah. He sure wasn't in my spirit. Mm. No born again Christian can have a devil in their spirit. That's right. That's right. The, but doesn't the Bible say this is the house we live in? That's right. Well, you could have termites in the house. They wouldn't be in you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Little demon termites. <laughs> I physically felt that thing live. And I said, I love this. Yes. And I fell in love with my exercise. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And now I miss the exercise. Mm. And I have no pain. Now on the Owens family, my mother's family, which I, I take after <clears throat> when I was a young boy and I was with my, my mother's younger brother, her older brother was, was killed in World War II. <clears throat> they thought I was his son. I looked, you know, so much like that family. They all had heart problems. Had I obeyed God and started walking, I wouldn't have had the heart problem. But here that came. And I was preaching uh, for Mike Barber at a prison over the other side of Dallas. And I got real short of breath. Never had a pain. Never, never, never was a pain. I could feel this tingling kind of thing. Anyway, make a long story short. <clears throat> they ex examined me and said, well, we need to put in a pacemaker. 
I said, Lord, now I'm going to get that pace. I, I, I don't want that pacemaker. I, I, I want to get this by faith. The Lord said, no, you're too far behind the power curve. Now to a pilot, that means something. There is a place where that airplane can come to a place where it's about to stall and you put all the power in it you can, but it's too, it, too deep into the stall. It is going to stall. Now you're going to have to get out of it. And if I stalled at that, I don't get out of it. So I took the pacemaker by faith. What I didn't know until after they got the thing in there, it had a built in defibrillator. Paddles. <laughs> now remember, I got to go back and take my flight physical. Well, I got to jump through all these hoops. I got all excited on the tread and then set that thing off. <laughs> Now, the FAA had had experience with pacemakers, but not that built-in machine, man. I mean, no. And it, it, it kind of crossed your eyes a little bit, but I, at least I got sense enough not to do that anymore. So what is the answer to that? Get on that treadmill and go to work. Corresponding action to the faith. So now then, now I've got to go back and take a stress test on a treadmill to get my physical back. Now at my age, I was only required to do six minutes, but the Bruce protocol test is nine minutes. Now, we didn't mention it to anybody, but I was working out with the Bruce Protocol, mm. okay. which went up to 14% incline. Yeah. So, <laughs> God went in there then to the doctor's place and to take that thing. And you do um, an EKG lying down. Then you do an EKG after you do 20 jumping jacks. And then, and they still got the EKG on you. you know, I mean, I was wired up like I was going to the moon or something. And they take my blood pressure every two minutes, you know, are you okay? So I really never did breathe hard, did the whole nine minutes. And uh, <laughs> The cardiologist has become a very close friend of mine. He said, Kenneth Hughes is a, a rare case. He said, there's a lot of people we turn around. But he said, now I kept telling him because of an experience that I had right after that, that time at that prison I was speaking in, and I got back into the, into the airplane in the back seat back there. And I heard this in my spirit. I had this October the 2nd, 8.42 in the evening, just drizzling rain. I have given you a new heart. Amen. I just started saying, I have a new heart. Yeah. My name is Kenneth Newhart. Yes, sir. Yeah. I have a new heart. Yeah. And I went over to the 112th Psalm. My heart is fixed. <laughs> My daughter Kelly said, Daddy, your heart is fixed. Amen. I said, yes, it is. I have a new heart. Amen. I have a new heart. I have a new heart. Amen. And he said, you came in here with a very sick heart, but you are leaving tonight with a perfectly normal heart. And I have my FAA flight physical yeah. in my pocket. Thanks be to Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And 
technology is a super thing, isn't it? Yes. I was blessed. I'm not bragging on me. Are you kidding me? All I did was get on a treadmill. Yeah. It was Jesus that gave me the new heart because I never had a heart pain. I can tell it felt like there's this little tingly thing going across there. Never had a pain. I could tell that someone right. <laughs> I preached it, Jesse and Kathy to plant his church. And I could tell it. So I just had everyone that had anything wrong with their heart come up, laid hands on every one of them. Didn't say anything about it. Now, a representative of the company that made this thing came out and with their, his computer and paired up with the pacemaker and killed that defibrillator and wrote a note and signed it to the FAA that I took the stress test with the defibrillator active and now it has been removed because I no longer need it. So now I got my flight physical back and now I can fly, glory to God. Praise God. To God be. <clears throat> this is just a simple matter of the love of God, the goodness of God, and faith in God with corresponding action to that faith. And it's because of the love commandment. And I'm, I'm going to wind this thing down. Romans thirteenth chapter. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. There is no power but of God. Now you come down. Oh, this, the book of Romans is just this magnificent book. Look, this, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for having me do this. <laughs> oh, Glory and I were just. Oh, we were so thrilled. We were so in love with Jesus. We were so in love with faith and ha. Ah, <clears throat> and um, Oral Roberts University and, and oh, and, and I, 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 I wound up driving his car and, and, and I wound up being in, in the meetings and I held his coat and and had so many wonderful things. And, and Kelly and John were just little kids. And we came home one night and that, uh, for those of you that wonder what kind of airplane it was, it was a World War II Lockheed medium bomber. It was a Navy uh, Ventura. <laughs> Whoa, two Pratt and Whitney R2800, 2,000 horsepower aside, 4,000 horsepower on that thing. In fact, I told everybody on this one trip, we were in Detroit, that don't bring anything because all we've ever seen is full. <clears throat> the, this was a, the tail dragger and the door was back here. And the lav was right behind that. Now concerning weight and balance, you can get an airplane tail heavy. You, you want it balanced or you get behind the power curve. We took off in Detroit 
<clears throat> Brother Roberts was landing in, in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We had had a meeting in Detroit that was, whoa, just miracles that were just astounding. So, <clears throat> and it was snowing in Kalamazoo. So it was instruments. What I didn't know, someone on that trip, you, you, you ever seen a portable pil pulpit? The thing got its own speaker and amplifier up in the middle of it. I'd, I'd guess that thing to weigh, oh my, 50, 75 pounds. Well, I got on him for bringing, I told him, don't bring anything extra. Well, I got on him because he brought this old doggy looking golf bag. And, and, and so he, he, to keep me from getting on him any worse than that, he strapped it down in that lavatory and made the airplane tail heavy. <clears throat> so I didn't recheck it. We came up. Now, what is called the, on the instrument landing system, the runway and the, the final approach fix. You come to that and you come here. This is when you drop the flaps in the gear and you start down the instrument landing system until you can see the runway and then you land. We came right here and um, Brother DeWeese pulled, reduced the power and the tail fell. I mean, both of us just reacted. Both of us just, we just hit the throttles just as hard as we could. And just, it literally, there's so much power, so much horsepower, 4,000 horsepower, just blew that airplane up like that. Keep us from stalling and just crash. We got it on the ground. We got in one night and it was kind of late. And of course, I got everything. The, the, everybody else was waiting, you know, Brother Robert's kid. So I got his, I always kept his, I kept his hanging clothes in, inside the airplane there. And, and then kept, I put his luggage right on top so that I could get it out. And the luggage was, <laughs> had been the bomb bay on that bomber. So it was kind of strange, you know, getting all the baggage in there. And it, so, but I got his out. His, all, his was always right on top. And I got it out and, and Kelly was standing there. She walked up to Brother Roberts. Do you love Jesus? He said, yes, Kelly, I do. If you love Jesus, you share your toys. <laughs> he said, I don't remember exactly what he said. If you'd share your airplane with my daddy, I could go see my nanny. <laughs> no, Kelly. You'd have to have a credit card that thick. <laughs> Things burn a hundred gallons an hour. There's no way, you know. I said, please don't get that. He left. And we were, we were, then we went to one of Brother Hagin's seminars and, uh, <laughs> you know, you want your kids to, and he just picked John up, had him up here in his arm and Kelly was standing right here. He was standing back there at the book table. And I thought the prophet has my son in his own arms. And John just went, pow. <laughs> I mean, he popped him one. That, if that wasn't enough, Kelly said, my little brother eats boogers. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria said, you kids come with me. <laughs> oh Lord. And later, Brother Hagin laughed about that. I mean, you know, he, I remember one time in a meeting that where I was and, and I heard him say, he said, he said, you know, children now just don't understand things that sometimes they get a little rambunctious. Don't they brother Copeland? I said, yes, they do. <laughs> 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 
Well, baby Christians are that way. Yeah. <laughs> baby Christians. <laughs> they may be 54 years old, but in the spirit, yeah. just babies. Mm -hmm. And so you feed them. Yes. But in this congregation, mm. I'm not feeding you milk. Mm. Yes, right. But meat yes. and the good things and the power of the love of God. I'll close it with this. Colossians chapter one. Did you enjoy Bishop Bailey this morning or what? And Terry You know what I'm going to get? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get me a red jacket <laughs> and a white, I got the white shirt yes, sir. and I got the blue slacks, but I don't have a red jacket. She <laughs> pulled one on me, Jeff. I, didn't. <laughs> I mean, my pillowcase is red, white, and blue. Yes, I have never found a pair of shorts yet to red, white, and blue, but I'm, I got one pair of red ones and one pair of white ones and blue, but I, I guess I could wear all three. Man, hey, you know what I could do? <laughs> I could get Gloria to cut them things up and <laughs> put one leg. <laughs> hey, that's, thank you, Lord, as soon as I get home. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. <laughs> Now, what does that have to do with this me, this <laughs> message? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I just thought maybe you ought to know that. But anyway, <laughs> where is Colossians? It's in the New Testament, isn't it? <laughs> First chapter. Oh, I can just see it in my mind that the, the first time I really stopped to study this small letter. These are letters. Yeah. Take the time. That's not but four chapters long. You can read that in a few minutes. Read it every day for a while. You partners know that Colossians 1, 9, 10, and 11 is on the bottom of that letter. I pray this for you. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, all dunamis, mm -hmm. yes. all power. Yes. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and dunamis. Yes. Yes. That Greek word is the same word from which we get received dynamite. Dynamite, dynamite, dunamis. <clears throat> Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the authority of darkness. One of the things about the, the English Bible is having words that actually mean different things. Well, we, we have the same thing in, in English. We just don't pay enough attention to it. Thou shalt not kill. 
that actually said, you shall do no murder. But we have the same thing in English. We have murder, self-defense, justifiable homicide. All of that is killing. Some accidental and some premeditated. But this one delivered us from the authority of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the word there, dear son, the son of his love. The, look it up. The son of his agape. It is the love kingdom. It is the kingdom of love. And God is king wherever love is pr- primary. Amen. Now, oh, I talked about a warrior going to war with love. Now, last week, I was on the Navajo Indian Reservation. My name is Wamble Hueste. Good Eagle Speaks. And my spiritual son, I'm with Jerry Savelle and I, well, his name is Elson Bennett in English. And um, his, his name in Navajo, since he's a pastor, is Thunder Speaks. And I'm telling you, you know what? He's, he, he texted me today. David, you have my phone. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, here it is. Thank you, sir. A dishonored warrior is a warrior that fights without love. Dan Aki, Navajo code talker. United States Marine Corps. Do you understand what the code talkers were? The Japanese listening in couldn't understand Navajo. Not only is that a very difficult language to learn, but they, they even had code inside, like a tank was a turtle in Navajo. Well, you'd have to, they never heard anything like Navajo to start with. Cause when, when someone speaks Navajo rapidly, it just, it sounds like a bunch of grunts and groans particularly if they're really rattling it off. Like I had to practice my name. <laughs> because of the accents and so forth. I had a little bit of edge because of the, uh, of what amount of Spanish that I speak. Uh, an unworthy warrior goes to war without love. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He's no longer the only begotten Son of God. He is the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we have, we are joint heirs with him. Yes. We have firstborn status. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, sir. There's someone in the sound of my voice that's having heart pains right now. AFib. I, I, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus sacrificed his body for yours. His, 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 the, the, the very, the, the, the very sack around his heart, his, 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 that spear went right up and then the blood and water flowed out of it so your heart could be healed. Mm. Oh, thank you. Burning ulcers, being healed and the peace coming in there. Check yourself. Check your love life first. Repent if necessary. Because Jesus, do you, do you know that's the only thing Jesus pointed out? There are many hindrances to faith, but that's the only one. Take, just take a red pencil and mark them. The only thing he ever said, he said, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. Faith won't work in an unforgiving heart. You love your neighbor as yourself. Fulfilling the law and the, and the prophets. And then he said, What's your name, brother? Gabe Rogers. Jay. Gabe. Then he said, A new commandment I give you. Yes, sir. That you love one another. Yes, sir. Now, well, I'm not through. The prayer that he prayed in the 17th chapter of John. Oh, I remember praying this. And I, he began to pray. This is right there that night. And so I thought, I just learned about the prayer of agreement. And I thought, I'm a student there at ORU. I thought, I'm going to agree with every word of this. I didn't know it was the right, but I didn't know anything yet much. And so I just started agreeing and I just agreed and agreed and agreed. And he came on down and I thought, oh, this is so good. And uh, then verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And I thought, right there, he prayed for me. Oh, that they may all be one as thou father art in me and I in thee and they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. Oh, I agree with that. And the glory which thou gavest me, I've given them. And I thought, oh, now, whoop, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The glory. Uh, well, now, yeah, but it's, it's written in red. Okay. I and them, thou and me, that they may be perfect uh, in, in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as much as you loved me. And I said, no, 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 no. And I was, I was standing up in that, our little living room. Our whole house wasn't as big as that platform, but in just about that wide, had their little living room there. It's just a little project house. You know, the old kind, the little hallway, 
um, that had a floor furnish in the floor. It was built World War II. No, I said, boy, there's no way that you love me as much as you love Jesus. I, no, I was trembling all over. But I said, Lord, I said it. I said I was going to agree with this. And I said, the world might know you sent me. Love them as you love me. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 26, I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Romans 5, 5. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit because it's the same spirit. Mm -hmm. wow. The same spirit. Amen. We were in that 13th chapter of Rome. What time is it? Oh, it's still dark. So it, <coughs> <laughs> well, hey, That's right. I am going back to some old days, but uh, you know, it's still dark, but, you know, you know. Let's go home till the sun starts coming up. <laughs> we were talking there in the 13th chapter of Romans a while ago. And Gloria and I had, had come back from Tulsa. And, um, and I was preaching at Grace Temple, which is mother and dad's home church. And um, Harold and Lou Nichols pastored that church. They're both in heaven now. And uh, now just, oh, well, a minister of God is so good. And, and you know, the, mm -hmm, for thou shalt love the, oh. But then I got down to that eighth verse, before thou shalt know, you know, the, the law and the commandments. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another Huh? Oh, I thought I'll get to Amplified. It said, stay out of debt. Mm. Gloria! <laughs> she came in there. Mm. And I was still standing there in my bedroom when I was living at home. Mm -hmm. I said, Gloria, she came in there and she looked at me. Well, see, there went my airplane, there went her house. In our minds, she said, now, what temper is to steal? She said, if that's what the book says, that's what we're going to do. And turned around and walked out. Well, you can't build a doctrine or anything else on one verse. That wasn't even talking about money. <laughs> So then I thought, well, I better check this out. So then I went over to the blessing and to the curse. And then in the book of Proverbs, the borrower is servant to the lender. And you shall lend to many and not borrow. You will be the head and not the tail. But you will you will borrow and lend the nun and you will be the tail and not the head. I found out that debt was a curse. Yeah. So we just made it right then. That, well, thank God. Well, Lord, we had to learn how. <sighs> I didn't know how. But it's one of the greatest things that ever happened. Because there's so many dumb things I would have done if I could have got the money and found out later God didn't call me to do that in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I don't owe somebody for that Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. And I, I, I got one. 
I got an Ishmael in my hair. And I went out there and sat out under the wing of that airplane. I was, I was, I knew better. I let somebody talk me into it. I knew better than to do it. And I would, so they met my phone. I sat down under the wing of that airplane and I wept. I said, God, help me. Help me get this thing out of my hangar. He did one of the most unusual miracles that, and it was just, and it was gone. It was amazing. That ended that. Then I had to learn that leasing something was another way to borrow money. You dumb, dumb. What's the matter? Dumb, da, dumb, dumb, dumb. So that had to come to a close. There was a, oh, one of the greatest guys, such a good friend. Met him in full gospel businessmen's fellowship. He's a car dealer. And so I leased car for me and a car for one of the men that was, that was helping me. Beautiful Chrysler, just a gorgeous car. And I drive it to the airport and I'd come back and the battery did. Huh. And I'd check the batteries, nothing wrong with it. And the thing's just fine. And then I'd, I'd go home, everything's all right. And then, I'd, and then, then the battery would be dead. And I thought, <laughs> now my lightning fast mind has figured out I, I messed this up. <laughs> so I called him and I, I said, sir, uh, I'm gonna send these cars back to you. He said, well, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, Kenneth. I said, no, about the lease. I said, oh, no, no, hey, you don't understand, Bob. Mm. I said, I, I didn't tell him anything wrong with the car. I said, they don't have much mileage, on but I'm going to pay up the lease and you sell the cars and whatever you lose on those cars, I'll pay the difference. Of course, I said, I, I'm talking about the minister. He said, you mean that? I said, well, Bob, you know me, you know what I mean. He said, nobody else ever did that. <laughs> so we did that. Well, he didn't lose anything. There was a guy got a hold of me. He said, this is Kenneth Coleman. I said, yeah. He said, um, you, you bought a, um, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, light yellow uh, Chrysler. And I said, that was your car? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, Mr. Copeland, I want to tell you that's one of the finest cars I ever had in my life. He said, it's just nothing ever goes wrong with that car. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that was the end of that. And it's been the greatest blessing mm. to not do it under any circumstances until you have the money. We figured it out. Had we borrowed the money over the years, we would have paid something like, oh, I've forgotten that. Millions and millions and millions. And I'm, I'm talking about over a long period of time of money and interest and carrying charges and all. And it's time to go to bed around here. <laughs> but when you get over into these precious things, I don't know, to me, it's, they're timeless. And as I, when I stand here and my memory, I, 
I remember things, you know, and they just keep flowing up across my heart and mind. And all the things that I'm so glad I didn't do. <laughs> and some things I wish I had done. But there's a whole lot more that I'm so glad I didn't do over the years. Just by simply obeying the word. That this, I learned this from John Osteen. Mm. This is hard. John, mm-hmm. I, precious man. Mm-hmm. I've had him call me. Kenneth, John, how are you? Good. You can do it, whatever it is, and just hang up. <laughs> Let's see, well, now I can. What, 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 <laughs> I learned it from him. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. Isn't that good? This is God speaking to me. It's my Bible. It has my name in it. How many of you remember Wayne Cochran? You old rock and rollers remember him. C.C. Ryder. Yeah. Wayne, call me. <laughs> he said, Kenneth, I just hear, oh, he and I spent a lot of good times together. He said, uh, you know, I never went to church. I said, well, not, you know, Wayne, I didn't know that, but he said, no, I never went to church. He said, I don't think I went once. He said, I stole the Bible. I got saved. I said, you stole it? (laughs) Well, there's one of them Gideon Bibles. I said, Wayne, they give you those. (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) He stole the Bible. He He called me one time. And a lot of people don't know this, but for a long time, he was a bigger draw in Las Vegas than Elvis. And he was at, uh, I think it was the Sands. Anyway, Wayne was there and (laughs) he and and his wife, and they just lived in the hotel, had all the food brought in. And she said, Wayne, if you don't get me out of this hotel, you're going to, he said, okay. So he just got on the phone and ordered a Harley. And they brought it to the hotel. So they got on it and they rode all over Las Vegas and had such a good time. And he enjoyed it so much. They just took it up to the room. (laughs) People are crazy. (laughs) And he tell me this stuff and I'll say, wait, what's the matter with you? He said, I don't want to tell you what's the matter with me. But anyway, the man that, that owned the hotel, he led him to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then he went to Wayne and he said, Wayne, I want to do something for God and I don't know what to do. And he said, uh, do you suppose there's any chance that Brother Copeland might come hold a meeting in, in my house? hotel since there's a casino here? (laughs) And he said, Wayne said, Hey, I know him. Uh All we need to do is call him. So he called me and, and he said, you want to come? I said, get me a date. (laughs) So, and back then we had our full man and stuff. And, uh, and I was waiting for 7.30 one night. I just waiting, looking out to get curtains and all. And there was a blackjack dealer came in there and stuck his head through the curtain, <laughs> had his little bow tie you know, and He said, Brother Copeland, he said, you know, I'm working on the floor tonight. But, but he said, I want you to know we're praying for you, brother. We, we, he said, we, we know there's a lot of sinners in this place. Get a hold of them. Lord, just get them. Just get a hold of them. <laughs> And that one of those evenings, I was walking 
through the, uh, just outside the lobby of the hotel that I had gone, I, I was going back through then into the auditorium back there where we were having our meeting. And there was a couple coming right towards me dressed. I mean, you know, evening gown, tuxedo. And the Lord said, I want you to speak to those people. I said, okay. And they were walking right straight towards me, very smartly dressed. Uh, probably, you know, middle-aged people. And so I said, excuse me. They said, yes. I said, uh, I, I believe the Lord would have me say something to you. May I? Yes, by all means. And so I spoke the word of the Lord to them that I had and they smiled and they said, that's very interesting. Thank you. And I thought, well, you know, maybe later. And so I started and there was a guy standing over here like this and the wall was holding him up. <laughs> Uh, I heard what she said. Mm. You pray for me? Mm. I said, sure, man. He said, let's go in here. Well, the men's room was just right there behind him, so we just walked in there. He said, pray for me. Mm. So I just laid hands on him and began to pray. And I'm telling you, the anointing of God came all over me. And he, <laughs> my God, he said, hallelujah. Mm. He said, I guess you're surprised to see that I know how to praise God. Mm. I said, well, frankly, uh, he said, I'm a backslid Pentecostal preacher, but he said, I want you to know I'm not now after what I heard you say to those people. Now, if for no other reason, I mean, we were in that casino for, I, I believe three weeks. A lot of people say, but it was worth it for that one man. And back there then they had just started poker tournaments where you didn't you know, play for, it was poker tournament. And then, then whatever your team won. And they sent word to me and uh, would you like to go up and see him? I said, yeah. At that time he was a world champion poker player. He wanted to talk to me. So I went up to his room and he grabbed me and hugged me. And he said, Brother Copeland, I want to talk to you now. He said, um, I've been playing this game a long time. But he said, um, now, the Lord got a hold of me a long time ago. And he said, this is the only thing I know how to do. And he said, I was one of the guys that was you know, part of organizing poker tournaments and, and so forth. Do you think I should quit this game? I said, absolutely not. He was kind of surprised that I said that. I said, man, you're a champion. You're a champion. You're a testimony. You're the best poker player in the world. Yeah, he said, I kind of figured it that way. But he said, now, Brother Kenneth, <laughs> now, he said, now, here's the way it works. He said, this thing, you know, poker's a slow game and then when they're playing it's as tough as we play. And he said, you got tables over here and tables over here. And he said, now, all, all of us Christians over here, we have our tables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Christian table. Mm -hmm the Christian poker table players. And he said, we have our Bibles and we also have our tape players. And he said, uh, you don't think it's, it's just something like this. You, you don't think it's wrong to play by faith. <laughs> hey, everything you do, do it 
in faith. Well, he said, that's what I thought. But he said, all those Christians are over here on the one. He said, all them heathens are over, <laughs> over there doing their thing. In a casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, the gospel. Amen. Amen. If it'll work, and it does, then it should be in Las Vegas. Then it should be in the casinos. Then it should be in the locker rooms. Because after all, what are champions? Masters of the fundamentals. There's fundamentals of faith. There's fundamentals to healing. The Super Bowl. Masters of the fundamentals. Yes. The World Series. It's the same game if it's the Little League World Series. But the masters of the fundamentals win. And the fundamentals of faith, mastered by the master. Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Faith will not work in, a, in an air of unforgiveness. Amen.